Are you traveling light or heavy? Heavy. Flying? Yes. I believe I have just the thing. John here, guys, and this is a special multi-product video, but at the forefront of this is the Racer X Twig. This can run three inch T-style props, and this is a first for these HQ 3x2 props. Now, the other thing that is very notable is this match made in heaven with the little floaters motors. 1103 8000 KV by the Bard team. Bard is a new collaboration. I believe it's with four different guys. Uh, I know that Dalton is up in the mix. Now, if you are thinking that name sounds familiar, it should. He has been one of the long standing people pushing micro brushless class forward. He is the maker of the little deuce frame. That's why these motors are little floaters. Ah, I see what you did there, very clever. And these two things together make for a package that is absolutely on a different flying experience than your typical toothpick. This can fly perfectly outstanding on 2S, but when you put 3S on here and you actually have props that will not flatten out and flutter with that extra power of these 1103 motors, it, it allows you another level of precision. Now your, app, you know, your thrusts are gonna be somewhat similar, maybe a little bit cleaner and nicer on this, but when you actually need to make a, cur a curve, a turn, it's amazing what the right type of prop will do. And I think that some of those 65 millimeter props are just too light, they flatten out, they flutter. You guys have known the tuning issues that you have. So what else is on this build? Well, it is the GEP RC 12 amp board, AIO, that's two to four S. It is the tiny little Ishin Nano VTX, this is perfect for this type of toothpick. Micro brushless or the twig class, is twig its own class now? I don't know, um, type quad. And of course I'm running on this particular one, a Cadex EOS 2, but I may actually swap that out for a Runcam Nano 2 since that's probably my favorite camera as of late. Um, this frame, if you can see on the bottom, has sort of a, and now that I look at it, I think I've actually mounted everything backwards. So I'm gonna need to flip that. But this frame actually has something very unique about it. Something very cool about it. Something very awesome about it. And that's that it has these built in braces right here. So that whenever you crash, that impact is kind of distributed properly throughout and uh, it really makes for a very nice flying experience. Now, the other notable thing is this is not a typical 3D printed pod that you see in a lot of these micro brushless class quads that are coming out today. This is some type of weird, um, it's somewhat stiff, but very flexible, um, smooth plastic. It's like some sort of injected molded type thing. If you ever had seen a Tokyo X uh, framed by FPV Flight Club. They had an injected molded plastic that's kind of similar to this. Of course, this is much thinner and lighter for this type of quad and it holds the camera perfectly and, have, and allows you to have some protection. You have little holes in the back to get some nice ventilation and you have holes for your antennas to come out there, no problem. Um, now the barred little floaters motors. What do you notice about these things? They only have two motor holes. Two motor holes, uh, is that gonna be enough for such a high V, high revolution per second motor like this? Uh, I was a little worried about that at first guys, but I think we're gonna be just fine. If you're worried about it, put a little dab of blue Loctite. I'll leave the link in the description for some uh, every quad builder should have that on hand at all times. 
and you won't have any issues. I actually didn't put that on here, but I may go add some at some point if I start having motors come off. And it does have the holes at the top for you to be able to screw in your T-mount props. I'm actually just press fitting these for right now just to see how well they stay on. Um, so I'll show you some flight footage on 3S with that. It actually seems to say to stay pretty well. I'm getting a weight of 55 grams um, as shown, which is, I'm pretty happy about that. You know, out of 3S battery, you know, it's gonna be a little bit heavier, 2S. So depending on the weight of your battery, that's where your all up weight is going to end up at. This is an awesome frame. This is an awesome motor combination. Now, a lot of people are saying for this class of micro brushless size quad, weight is absolutely key. It is totally key. And so if you get too heavy by throwing an 1105, 1106 motor on something like this, it's probably gonna fly quite well. But the extra weight is going to decrease some of that performance and it's gonna draw your battery down faster and I'm not sure if these, these stacks can really hold or handle 4S and, and a larger size motor like this. You may end up falling prey to the curse of the toothpick once again uh, by burning up those stacks. So I think um, I'm feeling much safer with this. I, I'm gonna probably do another 1106 build, but I really wanna go back to 20 by 20 for that size. 1103 is perfect for a twig, my word. I was really starting to almost lose interest with the small toothpick class because of all of the frustrations, but this twig has pulled me back into micro brushless. Micro brushless. Um, wow, the barred motors are great. One note about the barred motors is that I found the motor strands coming right out the wire were, or right, the wires coming right out of the base of the motor were kind of touching the bell a little bit, causing them to not spin freely. So all I did was just take my finger, kind of you know, push it down just a little bit. I didn't have to take anything apart or whatever, and then that helped me out. But just a note, so um, the finish on these motors is so cool, the black and gold, my goodness. You can even see the little logo on there. <laughs> nice one, uh, Dalton. So thanks to all these guys for helping me get this project in the air. Let's get to some flight footage. Thanks guys.